The operating instructions, which must be permanently available, form the basis for all maintenance work. To guarantee component quality, and with it the safe function of the compressor, only use genuine components from Zauer and Zorn. Please be aware that the use of an alternative source for parts may cause compressor damage, personal injury and void warranty. All Zauer and Zorn original parts are supplied with a Zauer Certificate of Conformity. Only authorized people are permitted to operate and maintain Zauer compressors. All maintenance work must be carried out in accordance with the relevant safety and health regulations. In order to avoid the risk of personal injury, before maintenance ensure the compressor has been allowed to cool, internal pressure has been relieved and any life-threatening voltage isolated. Please note, the maintenance work needed for a three-stage air-cooled compressor is dependent upon the operating hours. Maintenance will begin at 50 hours after first putting the compressor into service or following an overhaul. By dividing the overall pressure ratio into three stages, lower compression temperatures are achieved when compared with two-stage water-cooled compressors. This design approach then helps to lengthen the period between maintenance intervals and importantly increases the compressor component life. All Zauer compressors have their own ventilation system. To avoid damage caused by condensation, the fresh air supplied must not be directed straight at the compressor. The drain lines of several compressors have to be laid separately. It is imperative to avoid starting other compressors arranged in parallel by joining drainage lines. Our compressors can even be reliably used in room temperatures of up to 55 degrees centigrade. Attention! Too much ventilation is more harmful than useful. All host lines have to be installed tension-free and without any twists to guarantee the compressor vibration will not lead to material damage. Only authorized persons are permitted to install and commission Zauer compressors and to operate them. Before switching on, firstly check the compressor condition for leaks, joint tightness, etc. and all tools and loose parts have been removed from the machine. During operation of the compressor, the suction intake, as can be seen by the marker, has to be directed upwards. To avoid damage, only oils or oil grades in accordance with the Lubricant Table Chapter 10 are permitted. Should other oil grades be considered, starting requires agreement with Zauer and Zorn. For air compression, mineral oils are used. Synthetic oils are not recommended, as their use may cause damage owing to their better separation properties. The low compression temperatures of three-stage air-cooled compressors again lower the risk of carbonization on valves, even when mineral oils are used. Zauer recommends the use of normal SAE30 oils, as they are also used in diesel engines and readily available. Only after visual inspection and an oil check is it permitted to switch the power supply on. First, the direction of rotation has to be checked in manual mode. Rotation can be determined simply but has to correspond with the rotation arrow on the crankcase. If the direction is wrong, there will be no oil pressure created with the risk of consequential damage. The compressor has to be stopped immediately. The monitoring gauges and switches supplied for the three-stage air-cooled sour compressor, for example oil pressure and temperature switch, have been checked and adjusted during the works factory test. 
When putting into service, only the cabling within the electrical control panel has to be checked. This can be done simply by disconnecting the electric connections on the devices themselves or at the terminal box. After the interruption of the contact, the respective alarm will display. When the compressor starts in manual start-stop mode, the correct adjustment is for the drain valves to close after approximately 15 seconds and the compressor to come onto load. Every 15 minutes for about 15 seconds, an automatic signal will open the drain valves to dewater the compressor. The proper function for this cycle can be seen as the air pressure falls on all stage pressure gauges. When the compressor is operating in automatic start-stop mode, remote pressure switches monitor the pressure in the system. If the pressure falls below the adjusted range, the compressor will start. However, when the maximum system pressure is reached, the pressure switch will switch off the compressor and await a restart. If the compressor stops for a long period of time, then the power supply should be switched off. The air inlet filter element cannot be cleaned. It has to be exchanged when necessary, at least annually, but at the latest after 1,000 operating hours. To replace the element, open the clamps. Remove the cap. Replace old air filter element and close the air filter again. In order to check the coupling, remove inspection plug. The flexible ring can then be checked for damage. The gear teeth of this ring must not be deformed. After inspection, the plug has to be refitted. The required torque can be viewed in the operating instructions at Chapter 8.4. Firstly, all threaded joints must be checked for security and for any leakage using a white, lint-free cloth and retightened as necessary. The cooler and air ducts. The cooler supports. Threaded joints for pipes and hose lines. Monitoring gauges and any sensors. Cylinder heads and the cylinders themselves as well as electric motor and intermediate flange, bearings, protective switches such as temperature or oil pressure, as well as accessories and equipment such as HP flexible hose with non-return valve and any connecting flange. To remove the piston pin, the piston must be handled carefully to prevent any possibility of damage. The snap rings or circlips are removed and the piston pin pressed out. Using appropriate tools, the renewal of the small end bearing is carried out. In order to install a new pin, firstly insert a snap ring to one side of the piston. Then from the opposite side, carefully press the pin into the new bearing and lock it with the second snap ring.
Service work for the running gear requires specialist expertise, which has to be carried out by Zaurenzorn trained engineers. To avoid damage, only use oil grades in accordance with the lubricant table chapter 10. Before considering the use of an alternative grade of oil, agreement must be sought from Zauer and Zorn. For air compression, mineral oils are used. Synthetic oils are not recommended, as their use may cause damage owing to their better separation properties, which creates water in the oil sump and may cause more rapid wear through lack of lubrication. The low compression temperatures of three-stage air-cooled compressors again lower the risk of carbonization on valves, even when mineral oils are used. Zauer recommends the use of normal SAE30 oils, as they are also used in diesel engines and readily available. Initial maintenance after 50 operating hours, following startup or an overhaul, includes an oil change without replacement of the oil filter. It's easier to perform the oil change when the compressor is still warm. Oil filler cap, dipstick, and oil drain plug are easily accessible. To drain oil and refill with oil, pull out the dipstick. The optimal oil level after filling is midway between the upper and the lower marks on the dipstick. Between maintenance intervals, the oil need only be refilled when the dipstick displays the minimum level. Note, oil consumption will increase if overfilled. All piston rings should be checked and maintained after 6,000 hours at the latest. To achieve this, Firstly, the cylinder heads and valves must be dismantled. The pipe connections and hose lines of the cylinder heads, as well as the cylinder head nuts, must be loosened to remove the cylinder head. Then take the plate valve out carefully and clean all gasket surfaces thoroughly, again with care. To remove the cylinder, first the cylinder base nuts must be loosened. To reinstall, a small mark ensures the correct position for the cylinder. When removing the cylinder, the piston must be rotated to the bottom of the stroke, lower dead center, and has to be held in place securely, so that it does not strike against the crankcase or the threads of the studs. Take great care during maintenance never to damage the piston surface. Therefore, the piston must be carefully handled and safely positioned to the lower dead center position by rotating the flywheel. The three piston rings of the first stage clearly differ from each other. Tapered compression ring, scraper ring, and piston ring can be dismantled and mounted using simple tools. For safety reasons, the threaded studs should never be removed and refitted without finger protection. To check the ring gap, the individual piston rings are placed in the compression bore of the associated cylinder and measured with a feeler gauge. All three piston rings of the first compressor stage must not exceed the limit of 1.30 mm. If one of the three rings does not comply with this tolerance, then all three rings should be renewed. If the cylinder bore is damaged, for example by excessive scuff marks, we recommend measuring the cylinder compression bore size. When an old cylinder is reused with new piston rings, any step in the cylinder wall has to be broken. You will find the wear limits in the operating instructions at Chapter 8.12. Check piston and cylinders. 
In case of excessive wear, the cylinders must be replaced. During installation, the surface of piston rings with the engraved designation top has to be positioned toward the cylinder head. The ring gaps of the three piston rings have to be reinstalled, staggered at approximately 120 degrees. Before the installation of the cylinder, manually clean the gasket surfaces and finally clean them with an oil-soluble industrial cleaner. In any event, use new genuine Zauer gasket rings and gaskets and before the installation, liberally oil the internal surface of the cylinder as well as the piston itself. During this procedure, position the piston somewhat higher. The assembly of the piston with the cylinder has to be performed with utmost caution. It's important to avoid any damage to the piston caused by the thread of the cylinder barrel screws. Gently hand tighten the cylinder base nuts. Then by turning the crankshaft a single revolution by hand, a functional test of the piston stroke is complete. Only after that can the base nuts be finally tightened and secured. Any surplus oil can then be removed. During installation of new or reconditioned valves for the first stage, four new gaskets are required. A flat gasket under and over the valve, a precision gasket ring on the concentric valve, as well as a flange gasket between cylinder head and cooler. Before the installation of the cylinder head, the gasket surfaces and the inner spaces within the cylinder have to be thoroughly cleaned and oiled once more. In order to make dismantling easier, all threads are to be oiled or a hot screw paste used. After complete assembly of the first stage, the cylinder head screws, as Table Tightening Torques Chapter 8.4, are firmly tightened to 75 newton meters. For the second compression stage, proceed as before. However, the maximum ring gap, according to the table in the operating instructions, is now 0.75 millimeters. All valves must be checked and maintained after 2,000 operating hours. All valve gaskets and gasket rings have to be renewed since gaskets and gasket rings are high precision parts. Under no circumstances use the same gasket ring again or turn the ring over in the first stage. Such action would only result in leakage and severe damage to the compressor. Firstly, the pipe joints and hose lines on the cylinder heads as well as the cylinder head nuts must be loosened to remove the cylinder head. Then carefully take the valve out and clean all gasket surfaces thoroughly, again using care. The concentric valves are combined suction and delivery valves. The suction side is located on the inside. The delivery or pressure side is the outer annulus. The valve body consists of the upper part and the lower part, as well as of the internal parts. These internal parts consist of a valve plate and corresponding valve springs for both the suction and delivery. Valves are among the parts with the greatest stress in a compressor. However, slight markings can occur after only a few operational hours and do not impair the function of the valve. The maintenance intervals for the valves of the three-stage air-cooled Zauer compressor are 2,000 hours. Within this time period, no checks are necessary. Cleaning and then lapping the surface can remove any buildup and minor damage to the sealing surface of the valve body. We recommend replacing severely marked or damaged internal parts. 
Installation of the internal valve parts must be performed with special care and attention for their location. After the assembly of the valve, check the functionality with the help of a rounded pin for free plate movement against the springs. Please pay attention to the repair of valves on board. Any repair may require machining skills which again may not be readily available. As an alternative, the Sauer service offers an attractive valve exchange service. The lamella or reed valves of the second and third stage require less maintenance compared to plate valves. They will still function even with minor incrustations or particle buildup. Normally, the reeds attain the same service life as the valve body, which, because of its geometry, cannot be reground or lapped. Therefore, attempting to exchange the individual reeds is not recommended. In the event that a reed is broken prematurely, for example, as a result of an effect by foreign objects, please contact our service. In contrast to the WP-151L, compressor models WP-271 and WP-311L are equipped with concentric valves in all stages to maintain high performance with larger piston diameters. The maintenance for these valves has to be carried out in the same way as for the first stage of the WP-151L. During installation of new or reconditioned valves for the first stage, four new gaskets are required. A flat gasket under and over the valve, a precision gasket ring on the concentric valve, as well as a flange gasket between cylinder head and cooler. Before the installation of the cylinder head, the gasket surfaces and the inner spaces within the cylinder have to be thoroughly cleaned and oiled once more. In order to make dismantling easier, all threads are to be oiled or a hot screw paste used. After complete assembly of the first stage, the cylinder head screws, as Table Tightening Torx Chapter 8.4, are firmly tightened to 75 Newton meters. To check the piston rings of the third compression stage, first the cylinder heads and valves must be dismantled. To prevent any undue material stress on pipe connections, always use a second spanner. All parts have to be reinstalled in the same sequence and order. The O-ring located under the valve is always replaced. To protect the piston against possible damage, the cylinder is taken off carefully and the piston must be carefully handled and safely positioned to the lower dead center position by rotating the flywheel. As soon as the pistons are exposed, they should be subjected to a visual inspection. Beware, the piston rings of the third compressor stage are smaller and more fragile. Therefore, removal and reassembly requires special care. The two upper square section rings are similar and can be exchanged with each other during reinstallation without a problem. As far as all other piston rings are concerned, the word top printed on the gap has to be directed upward. The cylinder barrel and cylinder head surface are thoroughly cleaned again before installation of the cylinder. Additionally, the gasket surfaces on the inside and on the outside. As has already been the case with stages 1 and 2, new genuine Zauer gasket rings and gaskets must be used and the internal surface of the cylinder wall as well as the piston must be well oiled before installation. The ring gap of the piston rings at stage 3 is maximum 0.55 mm. The gaps of the three rings are installed staggered. Before the installation of the cylinder, the piston ring should be centered using a small amount of bearing grease. When installation is carried out properly, it should be easy to crank over the compressor a complete revolution by hand. Only after this functional test 
can the base nuts be finally tightened and the surplus oil removed. Before the insertion of the new reed valve, a new O-ring has to be inserted into the upper part of the cylinder. During the installation of gasket and valve in the cylinder head, it must be borne in mind that drilled hole and cylinder pin locate and fit easily. Oil or a hot screw paste on the screw thread will make reassembly easier. When all gaskets and discs have been inserted, all screws tightened hand tight, the cylinder head screws, according to Table Tightening Talks Chapter 8.4, are firmly tightened to 75 Newton meters. The check for the piston rings is complete. In order to check the valves of the three compression stages, first the cylinder heads and valves have to be dismantled. To prevent any undue material stress on pipe connections, always use a second spanner. All parts have to be reinstalled in the same sequence and order. The O-ring located under the valve is always replaced. After taking off the cylinder head, the valve surfaces are thoroughly cleaned. Then the functionality of the lamella or reed has to be checked. In the event that one reed is defective, replacement of the complete valve is necessary. Before the insertion of the new reed valve, a new O-ring has to be inserted into the upper part of the cylinder. During the installation of gasket and valve in the cylinder head, it must be borne in mind the drilled hole and cylinder pin locate and fit easily. Oil or a hot screw paste on the screw thread will make reassembly easier. When all gaskets and discs have been inserted, all screws tightened hand tight, the cylinder head screws, according to Table Tightening Talks Chapter 8.4, are firmly tightened to 75 Newton meters. The check for the valves is then complete. <laughs>